we were, we've decided not to do speeches for our wedding. Instead, we're asking those involved to make a short video that we can play for the service. Hope this is okay. Love, Jess. P.S. Have you been sleeping in the garden again? I'd hate to have to take away your visiting privileges. Again? Not so much love, Jess. Hmm. Video? What do I know about making videos? Oh, wedding, wedding. How'd you start a video for a wedding? Well, the one thing I won't be doing is one of those uh, god-awful clips videos with the cheesy voiceover narration, uh, Wonder Years style. Um, you know, when I first met Adam, he was just a little girl, and I was all-star quarterback for the Memphis Degenerates. <laughs> Or uh, something like, When Adam and Jess first met, I remember a lot of people said that he was too old for her. But I say, Any man who's lived and fought through two world wars on both sides has the right to pick and choose his own child bride. Oh look, here he is in his old army uniform. Ah, the East Yorkshire deserters. What a great regiment they were. Very elusive in the face of the enemy. Uh, who was in that regiment? Um, let me think. Uh, oh, there was, there was Slippery Pete, uh, Captain Conchi, uh, and the Coward. Uh, Play Dead Jones, he was one. And Adam. I wonder what ever happened to the rest of those boys. <laughs> You don't hear much about them these days. But I'm getting ahead of myself. If you really want to know the true story behind Adam and Jess, and then I guess we're going to have to take a little trip all the way back to childhood. Come rain or hail or wind or snow I'm not going out to Flanders So let's fight in the double It's silly dawn It's your sergeants and your commanders go Let Englishmen fight English wars It's nearly time to start it all Salute to the sergeant ever You know, I must have known Adam for a fair few years now. In fact, it's hard to think back to a time before I knew him. Although I often try. I don't think I ever met his parents. He seemed to spend most of his time hanging around with mine. Staying in our house. Eating our food. Even sleeping over most nights. You know, it all begins to look a bit weird when you think back to it. That strange Yorkshire accent, the catchphrases and blonde wigs, his fondness for shell suits. That brief time he spent hosting Top of the Pops in the mid-1980s. Probably best not to think about it too much now. 
A lot of water has flowed under a lot of bridges since then. If you catch my drift. But you know, in many ways, ours was a very normal childhood. Our mother was your standard low-level enforcer for the mob, and our father was in charge of his own cult. The golden sons and daughters of the rising dawn of tomorrow. Today! The Hazelbranch, of course. They were nice people. A little serious, perhaps. But nice. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you fire! But it wasn't always easy. Two boys growing up together like that. I mean, we had our moments, don't get me wrong. But we'd always try and do things as a team. We climbed our first trees together. We chased our first football together. Went to our first transvestite party together. Suffered our first post-transvestite party hangover together. Uh, golden times. And you know, one of the reasons we were so close growing up was due to my parents' problems when it came to money. I mean, once the bottom fell out of the cult business, times were tough. My mother even tried to sell my brother using her crime connections. And the classified ads in the whole Daily Mail, but... There were no takers. And my father, well, he grew quite desperate. Tried turning his hand to anything in order to make a quick buck. Professional zombie. Fighter pilot. Pacifist pilot. TV repair idiot. He tried it all. And then there were those days where he'd just stare at the ground for hours on end. And if anyone asked what he was doing, he'd say he was looking for oil, but he wasn't. And then he'd ask them for some money. It really was quite embarrassing. Like the time he phoned up the Guinness Book of World Records claiming to be the world's tallest man. But when they turned up to verify it, they found he was just stood on a table. On two blocks of wood. And as they turned to leave, he asked them for some money. It really was quite embarrassing. You know, until the day he died, he never quite got the hang of the business world. Yes siree, times were sure hard back then. Times got so hard that at one point we were forced to spend a whole year living back in the 1950s. I mean, that's poor. Backwards time travel poor. And yet, despite this, every summer, without fail, our parents still took us on holiday to France. Uh, only it turns out it wasn't France. It was just a Lego castle someone had built in the corner of the front room. We used to spend weeks there. Sure seems bloody stupid now. But if you ask any leading sociologist, they'll tell you that poverty can lead to conflict. And perhaps my most vivid memories of those times growing up together are of the fights. And who could forget those fights? Ben. You back. Naz. Jones Jr. The mighty Lennox Lewis. And, best of all, this guy. You just 
just don't see class like this anymore. Imran Khan and Ali. And that's how we do. Boy, I cut to all the crew. I wonder whatever happened to this guy. Oh yes, I remember. I mean, you're probably all too young to remember the 1990s. And again, to prevent this guarantee of peace. When John Major's Tory party was swept aside by nude labor. You see, dreams seemed real back then, and so did real life. Anything was possible in the 90s, before he met him and turned into this. Back then, ginger was the nation's favorite color. And everybody either came from London or Manchester. And then, of course, there was the music. Bands like Blurred, Oasis, Cypress Hill, The Wu-Tang Clan, Sea Monkey. Don't believe in Santa. He doesn't believe in Santa. It's getting better. And best of the bunch, the local lads from across the way, the mighty several shed seven. It's getting better all the time. I got my wings and I can fly. I will fly to you. But it wasn't all great. We had our fair share of manufactured pop as well, with bands like the Spice Girls, oh, Girl Power, that uh, Jerry Spice made her living doing softcore pornography for the Spice Girls. Just saying. And Adam and I, we flirted with the pop scene, forming the formidable mutual respect after a crazy all-nighter spent eating wambas, drinking iron brew, and smoking crystal meth. A lot of crystal meth. The blue kind. That stuff will sure take you places. It was a career we both took very seriously. And then we both hit the bottle pretty hard. And that's about all I can remember until the present day. Golden time. And then there's Jess. I mean, what can I say about Jess in this video? To be honest, we didn't get off to a great start, her and I. Although I'll never forget the first time I saw her. I mean, she would kill me if uh, she ever caught me saying this out loud. But, well, let's just say that one of us was wearing the shortest of short skirts. I mean, practically a belt. Uh, and the, the tightest little teeny weeny top, nothing left to the imagination, uh, was covered, and I do mean covered, in makeup. I mean, it looked like it had been plastered on with a trowel. Uh, and was drunk, of course, drunk as a skunk, uh, and shouting the most obscene things I think that anyone in that fishmongers will have probably ever heard. And they banned me from teaching straight after I did that. Which is a shame, because I quite like that job. Jess looked nice that night, though. Maybe I should start her video with that. They 
drove for miles and miles on those twisting turning roads. But of course, that version's only partially true. Uh, the first time that I actually met Jess, she flew in through the open window of my rundown little bedsit in Leeds. The most beautiful songbird you could ever wish to hope to dream to imagine. And once there, she perched upon the back of a rickety old chair and proceeded to sing in a voice wrapped in velvet and dipped in honey. A sound so exquisite that at that very moment and for many days to follow, I was not sure whether I had been asleep or awake. Whether it had been real, whether it actually happened, or whether I had just dreamt it. But I believed that it must have been real, because I had never had a dream like it before. Or since. And even as she sang, even as I found myself lost inside of that sound, and felt the, the ice begin to crack, and then thaw, and then melt around this crusty old drunk's heart. I looked across and saw my brother gazing back at her. And I thought, that must be what love looks like. <laughs> and I think I knew at that very instant that, uh, <laughs> that one of us would have to marry her. And I was right. Music heard so deeply that it is not heard at all. But you are the music while the music lasts. And now here we all are. Here where the road meets the river. And where the glacier meets the sea. And soon, who knows... Perhaps we'll be hearing the pitter-patter of tiny feet. Or, more accurately, the pitter-patter of not-so-tiny paws. It's never easy to say goodbye To the faces So rarely do we see another one So close and so long I asked the room if I'd said enough No one They just said, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Well, all this leaving. Oh, I'm pleased to see you now Got no shit 
short-term memory Ah, yeah, shake boy I said shake boy Yeah, do the help a shake And I guess that's it. That's all she wrote, as they say. Oh, look up there. A countless number of stars. And perhaps, too, a countless number of souls circling the ether. Each one looking for love. And every once in a while, the rarest of things. Two of these souls will collide and begin to harmonize in space and time together. They will find each other and vibrate in perfect harmony together. <laughs> what a strange and beautiful thing. Oh, but I do go on so. Oh. I grow old, I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. <sighs> I wonder how you're meant to end a video like this. Perhaps I should end it with a song. Jess likes music. Uh... And now the end is near And so I face the final curtain Ba 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 No, 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 that won't do. That's uh, far too cheerful. I mean, this is meant to be a serious occasion. Uh, what could we do? Uh, no, um, what's that song she's always whistling every time she goes by? Um, how does that go?
Jess. The reason I picked this song from the film George of the Jungle is because you once said it always makes you happy. And as your husband, it will be my job to make sure you always feel this way. I knew from the very first moment we met we were meant to be together. Kind hearted, beautiful and smart, you are my whole world. Without you, I am lost. With you, I am complete. I love you. George of the Jungle is because you once said it always makes you happy. And as your new mm. husband, new husband, new husband. <laughs> 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 <laughs>